Nissan RE5R05A has been around for some time now and has undergone several changes. Uh, there's a lot of internal uh, variables uh, related to the planetary gear set on Infiniti or Nissan. When it comes to the valve body, again, a lot of changes have occurred and um, the initial valve bodies did not have a TECM unit. It had an external TCM. Uh, what it did have though was an internal ROM unit uh, which captured some of the uh, basic information that was then sent to the external uh, TCM. So in about 2004, the design was changed from external uh, TCM to internal. And the, initially, the unit was produced by Bosch. The solenoids on this transmission, there are three different types. And again, when you pull the solenoids, make sure you mark where you take them out in case you have to put them back in. The two designs are not really an issue, but what is an issue is the third design, which is the low coast solenoid, which is this one. And initially, this uh, low coast was a low ohms design when they went to the uh, Tekken design, let's say, this was changed from a low ohm to a high ohm. Beyond that, you have different manufacturers that provide this to Nissan. So it could be a Bosch, a Mitsubishi, Nachi. Uh, those will all interchange as long as it's a high ohm design. With the solenoids out of the way, you can pull the actual Tekken unit. And the Tekken unit actually has uh, two sensors, a turbine speed sensor one and two. There is also an output speed sensor, uh, which is at the back of the case. This is actually the internal mode switch, which hooks the manual valve. This plugs in to the unit. And your regular harness, so if you have a single connector like this, that's going to be a Tekken design. This also has the um, uh, transmission fluid temperature sensor with it. As I mentioned, the initial Tekkens were made by Bosch. And when you flip them over, they have pressure switches similar to General Motors. When the manufacturer was changed from Bosch to Hitachi, they went from five down to just one. The issue comes in if you uh, had an earlier model and you went to the dealer and bought the, um, let's say the Type 1 or Type 2 that had a Bosch uh, TCM, you could buy it. Most shops could uh, install it, program it right in the shop. When they switched over to Hitachi, that created some issues for the shops because they were not as programmable as the Bosch design. So some shops actually had to take the vehicle back to the dealer to have them programmed. Again, fortunately today, you don't have that issue. Uh, for instance, Transtar has their RAP2 uh, kit, which will enable you to program this in the shop. There is a design, uh, several design changes on the valve body beyond the Tecum unit. And we have photos uh, during the presentation to show the differences uh, for instance, on your neutral reverse accumulators, uh, initially they had two uh, in the uh, later model, they went to a single. On the other side, you had a reverse brake uh, pressure control valve that was added on later, on later years. And in type four, the main thing that had changed because of the pressure switches was the separator plate. And you can tell uh, if you have a Type 4 because there's going to be a stamp code here which will be E1. 
So if it's an E1, it's a type four. If it's anything other than that, it's gonna be a type three back. Uh, one big issue that um, Nissan had had to do with the radiator. The radiator tanks tended to spring a leak, allowed antifreeze and water to get into the transmission and antifreeze would attack the TCM and then you're, uh, you're out of luck, you had to replace it. So uh, anytime you do this, always make sure that the radiator is in good shape and don't gamble on it. Make sure that you do adapt the strategies and you can use a Consult 2 scanner uh, if needed. Uh, but follow the procedures to make sure that the transmission is going to operate properly. I'm Mike Riley. Thanks for watching. See you next time.